Hey guys, my name is Z and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy. And welcome to the Design Technology Playlist where today we have a core content which is 1.4 Modern and Smart Materials. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe 1.4.1 which is Modern and Smart Materials, 1.4.2 which is Composite, and 1.4.3 which is technical, technical Textiles. So check out the pinned comment for all the timestamps. And we'll move on with 1.4.1, .1, which is modern and smart materials. And we're going to discuss A, shape memory alloys, nanomaterials, reactive glass, piezoelectric materials, temperature responsive polymers, and conductive inks. And modern materials do not occur naturally, but are existing materials that have been altered to improve their properties. And smart materials are existing or modern materials with physical properties that can be varied by an external input such as temperature, light, moisture, force, or electrical current, and they sense and respond to different conditions. So with the first one, shape memory alloys, SMAs, and they can be plastically deformed and will return to their original shape when heated or current is applied, like these. Applications could be glasses frame, or like medical sense, or like tweezers. An advantage could be it can lengthen the life of the product and reduce the overall size and it's less complex. But this advantage could be it's more expensive and continuous use can cause me uh, metal fatigue. And nanomaterials are, ma are made of like tiny components less than 100 nanometer. And they may be particles, nanowires, nanotubes, or thin films, and surface coating. Applications could be fire retardant materials, sunscreen, tennis rackets, which is quite advanced. Advantage could be it has a large relative surface area, improves different properties and can combine with other properties. This advantage should be there's an unusual physical and chemical properties and it needs to like, have a risk assessment for health and environment. Then we have reactive glass and it uses electrochromic uh, technology to change the opacity like opaque, by applying voltage while allowing light to pass through from both sides. Applications is like windows or like welding masks and goggles. An advantage should be it retains heat, heat it reduces energy bills and it provides instant privacy without permanent blocking of light. This advantage should be expensive and it requires electric, uh, electricity source. And piezoelectric materials are they generate a small electrical current when compressed the sensors, and they generate movement when an electric like electric charge is applied. And applications that to generate electricity and sensors and actuators. Advantage should be sustainable low maintenance, compact size, and useful in microelectronics. And disadvantage is that it wears out and has temperature, load, and voltage limitations. And then lastly, the temperature responsive polymer. We have a description that it can change physical properties with a change in temperature to deliver drugs, cells, or proteins to a patient in a controlled way when mixed with a liquid polymer, like it can be injected into the patient. And it's useful in biomedical applications, but a disadvantage should be it's still being researched, so wider application may take time. Then we have the conductive inks. It contains pigment that allows small current to flow even when it's dry, and it's made with silver, carbon, graphite, or other precious metal coated base material, and it can be used in pens or any suitable material. Applications could be it can use, be used in drawing working circuits or polyesters, polycarbonates or paper. Advantage could be it's easy to use and it's lighter and more economical than traditional circuit boards and it's low waste. But disadvantage could be silver is expensive and it's difficult to get the circuits right. Then we'll move on to 1.4.2 composites. And the composite com uh, consists of reinforcing materials and, bo and a bonding agent called the matrix. The new material has enhanced properties than the original materials. And we'll focus on concrete, plywood, fab, uh, fiber, carbon or glass, reinforced polymers, and robotic materials. Concrete is that it's made out of like these things over here, with different like, uh, uh, like composition. And proportions depend on the use, and it hardens over time to gain excellent, uh, excellent compressive strength. But tensile strength is, is low, so that's why they have uh, reinforced concrete to put like steel on it, steel rods. And it's relatively cheap and can last 100 years and I'm sure we all know what concrete is for. Examples could be it's mainly used in construction but it can be used for smaller products such as park benches and bins. Disadvantage could be it can be damaged by corrosion of reinforcement bars, fire or radiant heat and freezing trapped water. 
plywood is that a manufactured bond of uh, wood veneers bonded together, bonded with glue together to produce a flat sheet. And veneers are slices of wood that are three millimeters or less used to build up manufactured boards or to protectively coat other woods. And ply, uh, plywood also always has an odd number of layers, at least three layers, as they balance the stresses around the center core, making it stable in all directions. And one important thing to note is that the veneer's grain direction runs at 90 degrees to the sheet above and below it. So let's say if one of the grain direction runs from the north east, it, like let's say it runs from northeast to southwest, that means that the other board that's above it will have to go from northwest to southeast. It's like 90 degrees. So that which uh, which will increase the stability. And it's the examples are integrated for exterior or interior use depending on the glue's water resistance. And although plywood is strong and stable, some plywood will come apart if the layers become wet due to like the glue use. Then there's fiber, carbon or glass. And plastic can be reinforced with fine glass or carbon fibers to make it a higher strength to weight ratio than its component parts. And loose or wo uh, like woven fibers from form a flexible fabric and are built up in layers with polyester resin. And reinforced plastic can be sanded for a smooth finish and painted or color added at the start of the process. An example is that GRP, which is glass reinforced plastic, is easily formed into shapes and it is best suited to large structural items such as boat hulks, or boat house, or car bodies. And CFRP is carbon fiber reinforced plastic, and it's more expensive than glass fiber but it's much stronger. It is used in structural parts such as propeller blades, body armor, and golf clubs. And disadvantage is that it's breath uh, breathing inside the fibers can cause respiratory fibers. Then we have reinforced polymers and robotic materials. And these type of resins are combined with cotton fabrics to make uh, inflammable, inflammable laminated plastic sheets, rods, and tubes. And the grade depends on the fiber coarseness and all are about half the weight of aluminium and strong, tough, and with insulating properties at high temperatures. Examples is that non-metallic engineering components like gears and bearings and substitute for exterior timber because they are weatherproof and do not need further treatment, which is quite important if you put it in like outside when there's humid or like rain, but it's advantage could be it's, it can be expensive. So for robotic materials, they are materials that couple sensing, activation, computation, and communication, and can react to their surroundings uh, autonomously, which means that it can surround, uh, it can detect by itself. Examples could be vehicles or uniforms that change color to match to their surroundings, and prosthetics with a sense of touch, and plain wings that can change shape depending on the wind condition but it could be expensive and complex. Then we have technical textiles, like these over here. And technical textiles are developed for their functions rather than appearance. They can be strong, lightweight, waterproof, tough, breathable, biodegradable, and versatile, and increasingly economical. So the first one is agrotextiles, and they are used to improve or increase agricultural production, and can be made from nylon, polyester, polyethene, polypropene or natural materials like jute and wood and they are often biodegradable and offer solar and UV protection. Examples is that shading or thermal insulation, netting, wind breaks. Advantage should be it's durable and it reduces the need for weed killers and pesticides and can be cheap. Disadvantage should be it could change ecosystems by altering the natural circulation of water, carbon and other nutrients. Construction textiles is when it's developed to improve construction appearance and longevity. An example is that in structure like waterproof membrane, concrete reinforcement, and during construction it could be like these nets and like these over here, like canopies. Advantage is that it's strong and light and it's resistant to deg uh, degradation by chemicals, sunlight and acid, and it's stable in different heat conditions. But this advantage could be it may be expensive or hard to source and may degrade over time. Then we have geotextiles, domestic textiles, and environmentally friendly. So geotextiles are used in civil engineering where soil, rock, or other geotechnical materials need to be stabilized, filtered, drained, or reinforced, and they can retain their structure in the ground. Example is that known woven or woven mats for reinforcing banks or draining flatlands. Advantage is that they do not rot and they deal well with water. Disadvantage could be it's easily blocked by sediments and organic materials or matter, and it's ineffective if it's damaged. 
Domestic textiles are used domestically even if developed for other purposes like cleaning pipes, furnishings, carpets and they are hard wearing and stain resistant and absorbent but they can be expensive and fire risk for some textiles and they can be difficult to clean. And environmentally friendly textiles, they use organic, uh, like organically grown fibers such as hemp, wool and all these cotton or recycled materials. Examples is that geotextiles over here, argo textiles and some fashion things. Vantage could be its process with fewer chemicals with naturally more resistant and, uh, to mold and pests. But disadvantage could be it, it can be expensive. Then lastly, we have protective textiles and sports textile. They provide protection against heat, harmful chemicals, gases, pesticides, and even bullets. And for clothing, heat and radiation protection for firefighters could be an example of protective textiles, like parachutes and disposable chemical protection or coveralls. Advantage is that it can be resistant to many external inputs but still breathable and light. Disadvantage is that it's expensive and it's not environmentally friendly. And sports textiles could be a combined function with comfort for high, for high performance. They can be lightweight, streamlined and breathable, removes moisture, sends heart rate and all this technological stuff. Like, like let's say running shoes, cycling shorts, rugby, rugby tops and swimsuits. Advantage would be they can improve athletic performance, but disadvantage is that it's expensive and not environmentally friendly because they are still being uh, developed due to its higher technology like higher technology in that uh, sports textiles. So that's it for the specification 1.4 for design technology DT core content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and please leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.